All right, here's the, the homework sheet that goes with this geometry and rationals, putting it together. And then, so putting the geometry and the rationals together. Okay, number one, uh, the area of a rectangle. So I know the area of the rectangle is length times width. So I'm going to put them down. I'm going to multiply it. So first step is the formula. Area is length times width. Then I put that in and I multiply them together. Now I need to simplify this. So 10m squared is a monomial. I'll let that go. This is a difference of squares. So the square root of 9 and m and the square root of 25. So 3m plus 5. 3m subtract 5. I'm going to do the denominator, and then I'll work on the numerator last. So uh, the greatest common factor is 5m. And you have, uh, when you divide, you have 2m subtract 1. Now the numerator. I'm going to do that over here. So 6 times negative 5 is negative 30. And 7. So two numbers that multiply to negative 30 and subtract to 7 be 10 and negative 3. So when I write this out, it'll be 10m squared plus 10m, subtract 3m. So I'm going to substitute out the 7m and then have negative 5. Then I'm going to look at the first two terms. They have a 2m, and I'm left with 3m plus 5. Factor out a negative 1, 3m plus 5. So I'll come back here. I have a 3m plus 5 and a 2m subtract 1. All right, now I'm ready. So 2m subtract 1, 3m plus 5. The 5 and the 10 is a 2, and the m and the m squared is an m. So that's 2m. So all I'm left with for the area then is 2m over 3m subtract 5. Done. Number 2. Again, the area of a rectangle, but this time you're given it. So the area of a rectangle is this. So I know area is length times width. So x subtract 16 over x is the area. The width is x over 4 plus 1. And now my goal is to get the length by itself. So to get the length by itself, I'm going to divide. So I'm going to divide by x over 4 plus 1. And then I'm going to simplify this for the length. So to do that, I need to get one fraction in the numerator. So I need common denominators. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom times x. So I'm going to get x squared subtract 16 over x. Here, I'm going to multiply top and bottom times 4. So I have x plus 4 over 4. Now that I have one fraction over one fraction, then I can multiply times the reciprocal. So x squared take away 16 is x plus 4, x subtract 4. The reciprocal is 4 over x plus 4. And that's it. So the length would be, what's left on top is 4 times x subtract 4, and then the denominator is x. Number three, find an expression to represent the area of the triangle. So first, the geometric formula, half the base times the height. The base is 10a squared. I'm going to do this right away to make my life easier. I can see that. 2 goes into all evenly, so I'm going to factor out the 2, and then what's left over, I'm going to factor. So two numbers that multiply to negative 3 and subtract to 2. So that's plus 3 and subtract 1, and there's a 2 in front. And then the height. So I notice that the height, you can factor out a 2a, and you have a plus 3 and a 5 underneath. 
So let's handle two and two. There's no A to strike out. A plus three, A plus three. Two times five is 10, so they strike out. So I'm left with A squared times A, which is A cubed. And the only thing I didn't strike out in the denominator is A subtract one. So that represents the area of the triangle. Number four, can you find the volume of the prism? So the formula is length times width times height. So as I substitute in, I'm gonna factor. So I'm gonna say this is my length, I'm gonna say this is my width, and this is my height. So there's my length, so I'm gonna factor as I put in the length here. So the two numbers that multiply to 30 and add to 11. So six and five. Two numbers that multiply to six and add to seven are six and one times. The width is three X over eight. And then the height, X squared subtract one is a difference of squares the denominator, factor out a 6x squared, that's a common factor, and that's it. So x plus 6 divide out, x plus 1, x plus 5, the x makes the x squared just an x, and the 3 makes the 6 a 2. So the only thing I see uh, in the numerator that I didn't strike out is x subtract 1, and in the denominator, 8 times 2 is 16x. Done. All right, turn the page. So find the volume of a rectangular prism. So for the volume, it's length times width times height. The volume is this. So it's 7 subtract 3 over x and over 5x. The width and the height, so I'm looking for the length. So the width is 2 over x and the height is 4 over x. So I'm gonna write this as one fraction. I'm gonna write this as one fraction and then I'm gonna divide to get the length by itself. So to write this as one fraction, I need common denominators because I'm subtracting. So I'm gonna multiply top and bottom times five. So I got 35 subtract three all over five X. Here, two times four is eight and X times X is X squared. There's nothing that I could simplify, so I just multiply the tops and bottoms. Then I'm gonna divide. So you get the length by itself and when I divide, I multiply times the reciprocal. So I'm dividing by eight over x squared. So dividing fractions means times the reciprocal. Oh, and 35 take away three is 32. Might as well just write that number down, right? 32. So eight goes into 32 four times. X makes the X squared an X. And so what I'm left with is four X over five. Number six, the parameter of a rectangle. So we talked about this, it's twice the length plus twice the width. So in this example, the length we'll call 10 over X squared plus 11 X plus 24. I'm gonna factor that right away. So the two numbers that multiply to 24 and add to 11 are positive eight and positive three. Here, I have X plus one and X plus three. Now, for me to combine these together, the denominators have to be the same. So what does the first denominator have that the second one needs. So x plus eight, numerator and denominator. And then we're gonna simplify this a little bit, or at least bring it together as one fraction. So the common denominator is gonna be 
x plus 3 and x plus 8. And then when I look at the tops, I got to be careful here. So 2 times 10 is 20. And then x plus 1 and x plus 8. I need to FOIL that. So we're going to do that efficiently. So x times x is x squared. 1 plus 8 is 9x. And then 1 times 8 is 8. Then we're going to add this up. So that's 22. Now, I already see that this is factorable. So two numbers would be 8 and 1. We already had that, right? But the reason I'm doing that is because I already see that I could simplify this. So I see the x plus 8s. They divide out. And I'm left with 22x plus 1 over x plus 3. All right, try number 7. I think someone's at the door. Let's see. So try number 7. All right, I'm back. So number seven. So the perimeter of a triangle just means you add all three sides. So if I want to find the perimeter is two over x subtract three, five over x plus three, and then the last one. So x squared subtract 21 and x squared minus nine. Now I notice the last denominator is factorable. In order for me to add this up, all the denominators need to be the same. So what is the first denominator missing that the last one has? So I need to multiply top and bottom by x plus 3. Now the denominators match. The next one, what's missing that it needs is it's missing an x subtract 3. And the last one is fine. It doesn't need to change. So now we have a common denominator. So now we're going to combine like terms in the numerator. So I see an x squared. I'm going to write that down. There's no other like terms for it. 2x and 5x together make 7x. 2 times 3 is 6 take away 15, take away 21. So let me just write that down. So 2 times 3 is 6, take away 15, and then take away 21. I would add the negative numbers. So that's 36. And then 6 take away 36 is negative 30. So now we factor the last bit. So the two numbers that multiply to negative 30 and combine to 7 are 10 and negative 3. So our final answer is x plus 10 over x plus 3. That represents the perimeter. All right, last question. Number 8, trapezoid. Trapezoid is a quadrilateral, four sides, where one pair of sides are parallel. So this is another look to a trapezoid compared to the what we did in class. All right, so find an expression for the area of the trapezoid below. So area, as we remember, is half the bases. So it's like a triangle, but it only has two bases rather than one for a triangle. So half the bases times the height. So in this example, the bases are on its side. So the parallel lines are the bases. So I have 2 over w subtract 3. And whatever I see that's factorable, I'm just going to factor it right away. So I'm going to factor out a w. And then in the denominator, 
Two numbers that multiply to 6 and add to negative 5 are negative 2 and negative 3. Right? Oh, right. What are we doing? We're adding them. Haha. <laughs> we're not multiplying them. I was just confused for a second. So we're adding them. So half the bases, there they are. We're adding them, and I factored. And then the height we're multiplying. In this case, the height is the distance between the bases. So it's on its side. So it doesn't look like it, but that's the height right there. So it's the distance between the two bases is the height. And again, I'm going to factor. So 18 goes into both evenly three times. And two numbers that multiply to 14 and add to 9 or 7 and 2. All right, so we still need to handle this with what's inside. I made a little mess of it a little bit, but I'm adding and the denominators need to be the same. So what does it need that it doesn't have is a W subtract 2. So the denominators can be the same. So now the denominators are the same. I'm going to multiply this through. So I didn't, shouldn't really have factored this one. So that's W squared subtract 2W. We should have just kept it that way. But now the denominators are the same. And we're going to leave this in factored form, the height. All right, so one more step and then we can strike out. So we need to combine together what's in here. So we're going to add together W squared. I'm going to do it right here. W squared. 2 times w, take away w, so that means the 2 w's are eliminated. And then we have a negative 4. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. That's the difference of squares. So that's w plus 2 and w subtract 2. And the common denominator was w take away 3, w take away 2. Put down the height in factored form. And then we get to match. So W subtract 2, W plus 2, W take away 3. 2 goes into 18 nine times. And then what's left that I didn't strike out? So I see a 9 in the numerator. And in the denominator, I see a W plus 7. And that represents the area of the trapezoid. So it's good to put geometry and algebra together. Great job doing your homework, and good luck on the quiz. Mr. G Math, over now.